So there's a story in the Bible that I often come across and you may be familiar with it. Maybe you've heard it now. This woman has made history because she's in the word of God. She's in the Bible. So every time you read the Gospels, you're going to come across her. She is the woman who is known as being called a dog by Jesus himself. Now, most people reading this story of this woman who came to Jesus, her being called a dog, most of us will find that very disrespectful because... You know, when you, when you think of an animal, period, you know, being called any kind of animal is considered low and disrespectful. Like, you're not even being called a, a human at this point, but you're being called something that's very low that they don't even, well, the dogs back then, you know, they didn't get a nice little kibbles and bit, you know, bowl to the side. You know, they ate from whatever fell from the master's table. And so now you're being classified as something who eats crumbs. And so this story in Matthew 15, although I've read it several times and you know I've, I've, I've heard it through different teachings and things like that, there is always a new revelation to get from this story. And as I stated, this woman has made history. And you would never think that getting low would have such a grand and a big effect because we we live in an era, we live in a time where we feel entitled and we feel like people owe us things. We feel like the world owes us things. We feel like the government owes us things. Our parents owes us things. You know, our leaders, our pastors, you know, celebrities, you know, the 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 governor we, we we feel entitled it made me think about those commercials that you know when you're watching a, a a show and you know it's that that little break those commercials come on and the guy's on there and he's like hey are you entitled to a compensation like did this happen to you do you feel like what you went through that something should come out of it do you feel Oh, something? Do you feel entitled to something? Well, this may be for you. Check this out. If you've been in a car accident, if you take your roundup, if you've, you know, you know, dealt with this weed killer, if you've taken this pain medication, then you may be entitled to a compensation. And so you may look into that because you may feel like what you've gone through, somebody needs to pay for that, or someone should give you something in return for what you had to experience as a result of those consequences. And so with God, most people will not even ask God for healing. Most people will not even pray to God because of entitlement. And that's pride. And so this woman in Matthew 15, I'm learning so much from her heart. Every time I read this, there's new revelation. The fact that not only did she call out to Jesus, but he did not respond to her at first. Like he ignored her. So listen to this. I want I do want to read this. Matthew 15. I'll start at verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have a mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And so this woman was already considered a Gentile, unclean, a Canaanite, which the Jews had no dealing with. So she was already considered unclean. Yet she's humbling herself, and she already knows this. She already has this in her mind. Wait a minute, I already know that the Jews, you know, have no dealings with the Gentiles. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna put forth the effort. I'm gonna humble myself, let go of my pride, and I'm gonna ask anyways. I'm gonna ask anyways. It's worth a shot to her. It was worth trying. Most people are not even going to put forth the effort to even ask because of pride. And you know, it's interesting. A couple weeks ago, they talked about this in Bible study, the women's Bible study that we had. And we got on a very personal level. You know, we were, we were asked, what are some natural common responses to a situation like this where 
you are the one in need of help. You know, that individual, you already know they have what you need. And so this woman, she was persuaded. She was convinced that this man of God, son of David, so something in her made her aware that this was not just a regular man or a simple prophet or anything like that. This was the son of God. This was, the, this was she called him son of David. And so she understood that he has something that she needs and not just her, but her daughter, but she was willing to stand in a gap and go beyond herself to get what she needed. And so she said her daughter is grievously vexed with devils. Her daughter had some unclean spirits. You know, sometimes you may, we, we may read this and not fully understand that this lady had problems. Just like most of us, you know, living in this world, we've had either we've had problems or we still have problems. And sometimes we don't act to go through the problems that we go through or the experience or the circumstances that we go through, yet we're faced with them. Maybe you grew up and you've had a rough childhood or early adulthood. Maybe things were just really bad for you growing up. And because of how we grew up, because of what we've gone through, we can feel as though God owes us. Wait a minute. You know, life was hard for me. I don't feel as though I should bag. I don't feel as though I should get low. I don't feel as though I should take anything from anyone. I feel like you should give me this because of what I've gone through. And so this woman did not play victim. She went through some things. You know, life was was very challenging for her. Can you imagine having a child who is that were vexed, like overtaken and bound by unclean spirits? You you don't know what it was like for her to have to what it was like for her to have to deal with a child who went through this. I mean, most of us, we don't even like when our children are sick. And so this woman, she had problems. She had issues. You know, her child was being tormented, I'm sure, because that's what the unclean spirits, they come to do. They come to torment you and to afflict you. Her daughter was going through some things. And so things were hard for her. As a mother, you can imagine what it was like every single day you know, dealing with a child like that. And so things were not easy for her, you know, but she did not feel entitled. And it says this in verse 23, but he answered her, Jesus, not a word. Now, most of us, I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Most of us will find that disrespectful. At that point, <laughs> I, a lot of us would just walk away and feel like, you know what? I knew this was a waste of time. That was some of the responses that was given in our Bible, our women's Bible study class, you know what? At that point, you know, I would have felt like I knew this wasn't going to work out. I, I knew he wasn't going to do anything. I knew he wasn't going to help. I knew he wasn't what I thought he was. We would have just left and we would have just went back to that situation. We would have just, you know, fake it till we make it, you know, try to maneuver around a problem, maneuver around life, you know, avoid having to actually confront this any longer because... I, well, I sought for help and the help wasn't available, but most of us are not even willing to get low. Most of us are not even willing to endure the process or the test. And so in reality, there are things that we have need of from God, but we can't have the wrong mindset that says, well, God, I, I feel as though you owe me this. No, God should heal my daughter. Wait a minute. Life has been hard for me. God doesn't know that life has been hard for me. He doesn't know that my child has been sick. He doesn't know that I've been struggling with bills. God doesn't know that I've been in and out of a relationship. Wait a minute, life is hard. And so for me to come to God and for him to ignore me, I'm just going to go back to my problem. Most people find it easier to just go back to their problems, to just go back to living a lifestyle of hell, to just go back to living in the drama, you know, because you're not willing to go beyond you because of pride. You're not willing to get low, especially not at a place to be called a, a, a dog, an animal. Wait a minute, that's unclean. You know, the dogs are unclean. You're not, you're not going to disrespect me. I didn't need you anyway. And this is why we don't get the breakthrough that we need. This is why, you know, we don't get the results that we need because we feel entitled. You know, we feel like, well, I've, I've been through a lot as a, as a child. I've been through a lot as an adult. You know, my children are sick. My life is messed up. I'm in and out of a relationship. You know, my, 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 my money's not looking right. 
And then for you to ignore me, okay, I, I'd rather just go back to my situation. I'd rather go back to the world. I'd rather go back to smoking. I'd rather go back to fornication. I'd rather go back to drinking and watching ungodly TV shows because I, I came to God and he ignored me or I did not get a response. And so I knew this wasn't real. I knew it wasn't what you all made it to be. I knew, I, I, I knew, I knew it. But this woman, she did not stop there. As most of us, we would have just walked away. We would have thrown a towel. We would have given up. You know, we give up on small stuff now, you know. You know, we, we can't even handle the fact that, you know, the, the, the phone, the phone is off. Your phone bill is off. You can't even handle that. You can't handle the fact that a, a, a package is delayed. You can't even handle that. And so the fact that God is not responding when you want him to respond, you won't go past that. And because you won't go past that, you won't get the results that you need. You won't see God move. And so this woman was willing to go beyond that. Like, okay, he just ignored me, but I'm not going to let that offend me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow it to cause me to walk away because he has something that I need. And I'm willing to go beyond me. I'm willing to go beyond the pride right now. I'm willing to go beyond my self-dignity. I'm willing to go beyond all of those that are watching, the pressure, the peer pressure, what people may be saying. I'm willing to go beyond that because his disciples were there. They told him, they said, send her away. Send her away because she's crying after us. And this is a little embarrassing. And so she wasn't in an a atmosphere where, where it was just kind of Jesus. No, people were around. And so that was like an open embarrassment for him to ignore her. Like, wait a minute, you being disrespectful. I didn't need you anyway. But she did not stop there. And so when Jesus' disciples tried to get him to send her away, he said this. He said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came her, the woman, and worshipped him. Wait a minute. You're going to worship this man after he disrespected you, after he ignored you? You didn't even get no response. But she came and she worshipped him. And she said, Lord, no, help me. I already know who you are and you have what I need. And I'm not going to stop until I get it. I don't care what other people have to say. I don't care what your response is right now. You have what I need and I'm willing to get it. And so... He answered her and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Wait a minute. You call me a dog. That's it. That's the final line. That's the final straw. I'm out. You don't call me a dog. You don't disrespect me. No, you don't do that. But like I said, this woman, she was at a place where she took that. She took that. Like, I understand. I understand that I am unclean. I understand that I am a Gentile because, you know, the children's bread were for the children, not anybody else, not no stranger. Not anyone that was unclean. It was for the children. And so Jesus said that it is not right to take what belongs to the children and give it to anything that's unclean. And so you have to understand that this, this woman, she had feelings. She had emotions. She heard, she heard those words. He called her a dog. Like I said, naturally, most of us would not have even made it this far. And we would have just missed out on the blessing. We would have missed out on the healing, we would have missed out on the freedom, we would have missed out on the impartation because she received an impartation. She received something in this moment, but we as people, we deal with a high level of entitlement and we feel, we are already, like I stated, we already feel like the world owes us, you know? No, people should, you know, affirm me. People should love me. People should comfort me. People should come to me and give me things. No, I feel like I am old this because I'm a woman or, or I feel like I'm old this because I'm a man. I feel like I'm old this because I grew up without a father or I grew up without a mother or I went to foster care or I was raped or molested or I was abused, whether that was sexually or physically. I feel like I am entitled to a compensation. <laughs> Like the people on TV, they get you that way because they already know that you are entitled. They already, they understand how you feel on the inside. They understand that life is hard. You know, things are messed up. We live in a fallen world. And so you have problems and they, they understand that you have problems. And so they have what you need. Yeah. Call this number here and we have what you need. But with God, it doesn't work that way. And if we do not understand the way God works, if we do not humble ourselves, because most people are not willing to get low at all. Wait a minute. 
No. Pride is going to tell you that you are entitled to this. Like, like the accidents commercial and the money commercial. Yeah. You are entitled to a compensation. Call this number here. It doesn't work that way with God, but you'll miss it if you are unwilling to get low. You know you need healing. You know you need understanding. You know you need wisdom. You know you need knowledge. You know you need that level of freedom right there. But are you willing to put forth the effort to get low in order to get it? Because it's going to take for you to come a certain way. You have to come correct. You cannot come to God as though God owes you anything. It doesn't matter that you had a bad childhood. It doesn't matter that your life is messed up. You have to humble yourself. We understand that in the natural world. When we need something, we can't come as though, you know, that person owes me. You know, I feel like the government owes me. And so I don't need to sign my name. I don't need to sign no agreement, no document. No, just give me the compensation. Just give me the money. Just give me the government assistance. I don't, I don't need to put no information now. Why do you want to know my business? Why do you want to know my life? No. If you want this, then there are some things that you are going to, to do in order to get these things. I understand that life was hard for you. I understand that you're struggling right now, but it doesn't work like that. And so with God, it doesn't work like that. And so Jesus called this woman a dog. Do you think she walked away? Do you think she left? Do, she, do you think that she gave up? No. You can tell that she had no other hope. And she was that desperate. I want to say that she was she was that desperate. She had, it's like, I done came all of this way. <laughs> or you done came all of this way and I finally get to encounter you. Oh no, I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to make sure that. I don't walk away at the end because I've come for something and you have what I need. And so you calling me, you ignoring me, number one, you calling me a dog, number two, that's not, that's, that's not going to stop me. Her mindset, what kind of mindset do you have to have in order to be insulted like that and still remain and still try to go after what you want? He insulted her. You know, most of us would have felt like, oh, okay, he just insulted me. Like, you just disrespect. Me. First of all, I'm a woman, okay? I'm, I'm a woman. And I am a woman of, of what's the word? I'm a, I'm, I am a woman of honor. Yeah, honor me. You better respect me. I am a woman. And this is why most people are not going to get things from God. I'm not saying to be fake and, and try to use God as though he's a genie. But I'm saying that your heart, because she worshiped the Lord. Your heart and, and your heart towards God has to be pure. The word of God says that only the pure in the heart are going to see God. And so this is not about trying to do witchcraft or trying to get things from God. This is about are you willing to get low so that you can get what God has for you? Because there are things that God already has for us. There are things that he has. It's just we're not going to get it if we have the wrong heart. We're not going to get it if we are prideful. Jesus says that every person that exalts himself, they're going to be brought low. But if you can get low, if you can abase yourself, if you can humble yourself, then he's going to exalt you. Yeah, he's going to bring measures of freedom in your life. He's going to bring levels of revelation in your life. He's going to give you the insight and the foresight that you need. Why? Because you are a, a, a meek and lowly person. He says in Matthew 5 that the meek are going to inherit the earth, not the pride, not the arrogant, not the entitled, not those who feel as though God owes them something or anything. No, he's not giving the earth to those kind of people, but those who are meek and lowly, those who don't mind getting low. And you know what I am learning and I am understanding more and more is that the way up is down. You have to get low. You want to go higher then you have to get low. And sometimes you have to get so low to the ground that you get under it like this woman did to be and, and be called a dog. You got to be willing to take that. And she said truth, meaning I agree. I agree with everything that you are saying right now. I agree with the fact that you ignored me. I agree with the fact that it is not lawful. It is not right. It is not common to give the children's bread unto dogs. You are right. That's exactly what I am. But you know what? I'm not going to let that stop me from pursuing you and what you have for me. And so she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. 
And so they still, believe it or not, they still get a little portion because they're willing to get, or they're willing to wait for that crumb to fall. I don't know if you've ever seen a dog, you know, standing at the dinner table while the family's eating. That dog will wait and wait and wait. <laughs> they will be there before the food even gets on the table. All they know is that people are sitting at the table and in their minds, that means it's crunch time, sweetheart. It's, it's crunch time, baby. It's dinner time. It's dinner time. And so they will, the dog, the dog will wait at the dinner table. They will wait for the food to come on the table. They will wait for prayer or, or grace, as most people call it. They will wait for you all to break bread. They will wait patiently. The dog will wait patiently because in their minds, they know I'm going to get something. It might be a crumb, but something is going to fall from this table. And so dogs in the natural, they understand what it's like to wait. The momentum, the patience. You know, the dog don't walk away and be like, man, whatever. You know, I'm not getting anything. Nothing's going to come from this. No, I understand why he called her that. There was something that he was doing in this moment. And this woman responded as like a dog was she waited no she waited oh no lord i'm, I'm gonna wait because naturally the dogs they will wait at their master's table for something to fall and nine times out of ten something falls a crumb or something falls and that dog gets rewarded that dog gets what it has been waiting for the whole time no i knew something was gonna fall it was just a matter of time i just i just had to wait for it and they get that crumb they get that crumb. They eat what falls from the table. They do, and they get it, and they're rewarded, and they're happy. Even you, you know what's <laughs> interesting. You know, when even though it's a crumb, that dog, that dog just be so satisfied. I don't, I, I will never get it. I'm not an animal, but the dog will be so satisfied. They got like a piece of meat or a piece of bread or, or whatever fell from the table. They will be so happy that they got it. I would never understand that. You know, like, wait a minute, you didn't even get a full course meal. All you got was a crumb, yet you're satisfied. Yeah, that dog will eat that crumb off the floor and go on about his business. Although it waited the whole time for dinner to be prepared and for the family to start eating, that dog is satisfied. That dog waited. He anticipated for something to fall. No, something's going to fall. And when it does, I'm going to get it. And when I do, it's going to be great. And so that's how it was. And so this woman, she said, truth, Lord, yet even the dogs. Eat if the crumb which falls from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, Oh woman. So now he goes from calling her dog to woman. Right then and there, there was a promotion that happened. Because you, you understand who I am and you also understand who you are. But now I'm making I, I, I'm speaking something different of you. Are, you are a woman. She's been a woman. But Jesus says, Oh woman. Great is your faith, be it unto you even as you will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And so she had to go through some things. She had to get low. She had to get disrespected. She probably felt humiliated. I don't, I don't, I don't know the emotion. She probably felt embarrassed, you know. There's a lot of different things you could feel in that moment. I mean, put yourself in her shoes. You, you know, you, you're wanting something and you're being disrespected, you know. Things like you being called things like poor and you know raggedy, all these different, all these different things that most of us would not take. We would not take. Most of us, I'm telling you, we, we feel so entitled. We would not take, as they say, crap from no one. Oh no, you're not gonna disrespect me, but her, she got rewarded in the end. Her daughter got healed that very moment. Her daughter was made whole, all because this woman was willing to go beyond herself and to get low. She didn't come to Jesus and tell Jesus her life story and tell Jesus, you know, how messed up things were and how her life was messed up. She didn't come playing victim. She didn't come with no sad story. She just said, you know, have mercy on me, Lord, for my daughter is in this condition. She's in a state of mind. That's it. She didn't come telling her life story and how her father wasn't there and how her mother wasn't there, you know, how she was put in foster care, how she was raped and we don't even we don't even know her her background story except the fact that she has a daughter who is bound to unclean spirits. And so this woman came before Jesus and she did not walk away empty handed. She did not leave empty. No, she was full. She got what she came for. 
And most of us, we go to church and we do not get what we come for. We do not get what we come for. Why do we go to church? Why do we worship? Why did she worship? No. Well, we worship, number one, because that is our reasonable service unto the Lord. That is our first job. That is our first response unto God because he's holy, he's good, he's faithful, he's righteous, and he's deserving of worship. He's deserving of glory. And so that's the first reason why we ought to worship God and why we do what we do. Because God is deserving of it. We give him what's due unto his name. And so after that, you know, our encounters with God are supposed to change our mindsets, change our perspectives. It's supposed to cause adjustment on the inside. There's supposed to be shifting happening and, and, and taking place. We are not to feel as though here I am, God, I'm at church. That should be good enough, you know. I went to church and so bills should be paid, you know, life should be good, drama should be removed, you know, healing should be occur occurring in my body and in, in and around me because, you know, I, I went to church, I read my Bible and so most people, because they already have the mindset of pride, they already have the mindset of entitlement, they leave empty handed and you know when people are leaving empty handed when they go back out of the church from the presence of the Lord, the same way that they came in, nothing has changed about them. Why? Well, that person was unwilling to get low because in their minds, it doesn't take all of that. I hear people say that all the time when they see how we worship at the church that I go to and they see us preaching online and they see us withdrawing from certain things pertaining to the world. You know, they often say, well, it doesn't take all of that. And that's exactly why you are leaving empty handed. That's exactly why you don't have what you need. Because in your mind, your mind tells you that you're entitled to things. And so when you see certain things happen, to you it doesn't take all of that. Even people who might have watched the woman who Jesus called a dog. Maybe people who, who were standing around felt like, sweetheart, it doesn't take all of that. Go find somebody else to heal your daughter. There's plenty of people around here. Maybe there were people standing around who felt like it doesn't take all of that. But to her, no, it takes all of that and more. And so... For us, as sons of God, as believers, as Christians, it takes all of that and more. It takes me, takes from me to give myself to the Lord and to get low. Because I'm nothing without God. She understood, she understood oh no, I'm nothing without you. I, I understand that you have what I need. And so we're nothing without God. But if we don't understand that, if we don't believe that, if we don't see things in that way, then we are always going to leave empty handed. You're you're. Yeah, you're going to leave with nothing in your hand. You're going to leave with nothing in your hand. You came empty-handed and you're going to leave empty-handed. So that woman, that Canaanite woman, she came empty-handed. And when she left, her hands were full. Her hands were full. Me, when I encounter the Lord, I don't want to leave empty-handed. Whatever God has for me, I want it. You know, there's a song that says what God has for me is for me. Yeah, he may have it, but you may not be able to get it. You may not be able to receive it because of your heart. You're unwilling to get low. You're unwilling to humble yourself. Humble yourself. Get low. Get super low. And even if God doesn't give it to you today, are you willing to keep going before him? It makes me think about the woman, the widow woman that constantly went before the, I think it was the unmerciful or unjust judge. She kept going before him. For him to avenge her of, of her enemies, those who were doing things to her, avenge me. She was not going to stop coming before him. And he, he understood that, man, this woman is not going to stop until I avenge her, until I help her. And I'm unjust. I'm unrighteous, you know. And so we have to be willing to go beyond our flesh. We have to be willing to go beyond pride. We have to be willing to go beyond what we think as people, as humans, as the human race, because I'm telling you, growing up, I grew up in a society where we were entitled to certain things. Hey, you have, do you have this kind of problem going on where you're entitled to these things? Did you grow up this way where you're entitled to these things? Did this happen in your childhood where you're entitled to these things? And so we grew up in a world where people 
owed us things that we did not even know or we're not even aware of. Wait a minute, you owe me? I didn't even know you owed me. Like, what? There's something out there for me? And so we have that mindset when we come in to the faith and into the body. We have that mindset with God. We feel like God owes us things. We already understand that God has everything. And so we treat God as though, you know, we're entitled. We feel as though we're entitled. And if he, and if he decides to not do it, then we have other options. And that's where that plan B, C, D, all the way on down to Z comes in that note. Because if he says no, if he rejects me, well, I already have a backup plan. I, I already have something in my back pocket. And those are the ones that are not going to get what he has for them. Because he has things for you and I. But only the pure in heart are going to get it. They're going to see God. Only the pure in heart are going to see God. Only the meek are going to inherit the earth. Yeah, only the poor in spirit, yeah, you know, they're going to have the, the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit are going to have the kingdom of heaven. Those that give mercy are going to experience mercy. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they're going to be filled. Not the pride, not the arrogant not the ones that feel like they know it all and they have better things to do. No, you're going to get, you will receive nothing from God. Make no mistake about it. It doesn't matter what you think about yourself. It doesn't matter how entitled you feel to things that God has. You will not get it. He will leave you the way that you came to him if you decide to not humble yourself. There was several people who Jesus bypassed and walked by. Yeah, they had conditions. They had illnesses. They had sickness, you know, sicknesses and different diseases. And I'm sure there were other people who were vexed with unclean spirits and bound by unclean spirits. And they did not receive anything from Jesus. He walked past them. And like I said, to some, we may find that as harsh or messed up. Man, that's messed up. How are you going to ignore these people? They need help. How are you going to ignore this woman? She's crying out for help. You don't have to be that way. You don't have to act that way. Pride tells us that. Pride tells us I don't have to get low. Pride tells me it doesn't take off of that. But humility tells me it's worth it because he has what I need. And it's going to be for my good. And so my encouragement is that we get low. We humble ourselves. I believe it's in James where it says that God resists the proud. He resists the proud, but he gives more grace unto the humble. And so God will resist you if you are prideful. God will not hear your prayers. God will not hearken unto your, your voice. He will not incline his ear unto you if you, are, if you are a prideful person. He will resist you. He will, he will avoid you. But if you can humble yourself, then he'll give you more grace to get even lower. So that he can exalt you. So that he can bring you up higher. So that he can call you up to the higher seat. The higher place. And so be encouraged in Jesus name.